very good morning. Welcome back. Yes, new and exclusive. Not me, obviously. I'm old and like an old penny, me. Uh, but new and exclusive. This is the event we've got for you right now, ladies and gentlemen. It's very, very exciting. I'll start with the, uh, the cup because uh, in this uh, particular event, you will be buying bits and pieces, I'm sure. You could be buying something from Disney. You could be buying something from the Parts from Lace. We could be buying something from our first um, quoting classroom this morning. If you do, you'll be entered into a prize draw straight away. That's not too bad, is it? So anyone who will buy something at the moment into that prize draw, we've got £300 on the UK side. We've got $300 on the US side. Someone will be winning that amount at the end of this event. Every customer who places an order, just to recap, with Crate and Craft during the new and exclusive event between uh, Thursday just gone and uh, coming up on third to Sunday today. It's the 30th. Can you believe it's the 30th of July? Unbelievable. Uh, on the telephone or Crate and Craft website, you will be entered automatically into that prize draw. And if you want to know the T's and C's of that, uh, all on the website. Now, other good news as well, that if you're in the mood for picking up a few bargains along the way, put three items into your basket and you'll receive an extra 10%. How about that? So shopping really is going to pay you now, of course. The more you the more you spend, the more you save. So that's new and exclusive. And the other idea, of course, is bringing you brand new items you've never seen before. Uh, we're always sort of searching the globe for new items and new ideas. And I think this new ideas, as much as the uh, items, which is really, really important this morning, is one of those shows because it's the quilting classroom. Come hither, because not only do we have a fabulous collection of goodies for you, you have a lady who's been doing this long enough to know what she's talking about doing it long enough so you should listen and there are certain people in this building i don't listen to but there are a lot of people that i do and this is one jenny raymond <laughs> hello dave hello, good to see you nice good to see you oh, what do i love about you what your energy Oh, good. You've good. got tons oh, of energy. Oh, Where have, have you oh. always had tons of energy? Have you been lived your life full of energy? No, I enjoy what I do, Dean. Good. I really do enjoy it. passionate. And then at the end of the day, crash. Crash. Yes. Crash oh. out. Yeah, you Tonight you'll it's... find me sound asleep on the sofa. It's not pretty. No, it's not pretty. <laughs> Mouth open, <laughs> drooling, not pretty. Oh, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. <laughs> now, this is a very special thing because it's something that's got, um, it's almost a tradition for us now. You do this uh, once a month for us. About that sort about, of time, there, depending there, on when I can fit it in. Availability, because she's a busy thing. girl. But um, from years and years and years and years of quilting, what's the thing, do you think, that uh, you enjoy most of all when you're with clients and with uh, fellow crafters? What's the thing that goes, I, oh, I, I love that? I think the thing I really enjoy is the fact that they come to learn something and when they've got it, the joy that they experience with the doing of it. Be it ever so small, be it ever so big, I made it, I did it, it's mine. I have ownership of it. It's unique Do you to know me, what? and that's what I like. I had a conversation in the car on the way back home. Yourself. I went to um, a 90th birthday party yesterday, which is a very humbling experience, actually, yesterday. And on the way back, we were discussing things, and I said that actually giving is quite a selfish thing. And selfish is really a, a, a badly marketed word. Because the actual fact, when you give, it is quite selfish because you feel great yourself. And it's something you do, but you get something back. And that's the lovely thing about quilting, because you'll learn from Jenny, and hopefully you'll pass this on. Yes. And this is one of those crafts that is generational, isn't it? It is, and it goes on and on. And you're making an heirloom, you're making something for people to keep, to look after, to have. And what's something they've made themselves, Definitely. they've created, yes. they've put, and it's unique to them. And it doesn't matter, Dean, if it's got mistakes. No. But we've got the tools we've all got to mistakes. make it better. Because you think about it, us in general, as in humans. Yes. We've all got mistakes, haven't we? Absolutely. We all make yes. them, yes. and it doesn't matter. Right, okay then. So that's that's what we're going to be doing. Jenny's going to be, you're going to be taking us through a classroom and some ideas this morning. Just give us a quick overview of what we're going to be talking about this right, morning. Right, we're doing circles. We're going round and round and round oh, I've done in that. circles. Using a wedge of either the 10 degrees or the Dresden plate. Right. With a couple of other tools thrown in just to add interest. Okay. Now then, uh, we are going to be teaching you some stuff and learning you. Uh, but uh, in, in particular then, we've got some bits and pieces that help you along the way. And this is a first item, which we find, Jenny said this morning, morning, got a lovely phrase, really sweet, because it's the sort of thing you go, yeah, I'm going to get that, because that really will solve all the problems. Because a lot of quilting is basically, sm it turns into small shapes, you don't end up with bl blocks, you do, you're quite, working quite small a lot of the you time, aren't indeed. you? indeed, yes. Then so you need to cut them, you yes. need to press them, yes. you often need to arrange them, yes. and sometimes you need to mark them. And then you and also need to keep them, because the doorbell rings. Absolutely, and this tool will do the whole thing. <laughs> Let me give you the details, the 4-in-1 quilt is right here, no, it's not Jenny, uh, 428045, it's the multi-mat uh, for fifteen. Pounds ninety nine. Quickly explain what we got here, okay, Christian. Okay, what we got here. Well, let's look at yours, and then we can also look at mine. Okay. Why not? Right on the front here. This is a padded surface because if you open it out completely, it's an ironing board. Genius. All right, number one thing. But if you lift the lid of it, it's a cutting mat. Genius too. Next to that is some felt, so when you want to lay your pieces on there, they don't shift. Like that. And underneath the felt is some sandpaper because this is really good if you want to mark something because it holds the fabric steady. 
So That's I'm genius. using mine. Go on. But in the back here, I've got my pieces laid out so that when we come to talk about this particular part of, hang on, I've got my pieces laid out there, the quilt, they're all there ready for me. So this is absolutely four in one. It's got your pressing plate, it's got your rotary cutting mat, it. it's got your marking place, and it's got the surface that you can lay things out on. Cool thing to, to go. Them. Yes. Because if you're and on the go, you need easy side, it's sort of A4, it will slip in your bag, you've got it all. If you're not a quilter, you'll go, mm. if you're a quilter, you'll be on, you're on the phones right now, because I know for a fact you'll be nodding, going, I have to have that. And, and look at the, the fabric, fa look at the, the fabric, owls! Owls! owls. In owls America, owls. it's owls. owls! I always do that. America! Yes. USA is owws, and it's a iron in the, a pressing or whatever. Is it iron in pressing? Whatever well, you want to call it. Well, depends. doing that. Depends where doing you that. are. Uh, four to eight, oh four five. We're going to hurry up because I tell you what: the, the less time we spend showing you the products, the more time Jenny can show you them, and she can learn you about them as well, can't she? Right, staying with the owl theme, Go pin on. cushions. Right. I can take this pin cushion out because this is a really good pin cushion because it's got a solid bottom, nothing like a solid bottom. Oh. It sits down there like that, and then you can take out your angst oh. by stabbing him. Woo! Ah, so ah. The pin goes flying across the table, oh. stabbing it. So it's an owl. Owl pin cushion. Now think Christmas. Think a silly gift. We all love owls. Now isn't that? But really you know the gifts nice? you can't think to buy anyone because they've got everything. Uh, you, by the way, get all three. Yeah, you do get all three for the price. Uh, four two eight oh four nine. Uh, the owl pin cushion. Three assorted designs for eleven pound sixty nine is absolutely well, madness. One for you, one for a friend, and one to put away for something like Secret Santa or something like that. Totally agree. Yep. And we think about Secret Santa. You look about five, don't you think? Oh, there you go. There's your gifts right there because they're less than four. So then, moving on uh, to other gadgets and goodies. Okay. And I'm a great believer in buying things that make your life easier. Whatever you do. Four two eight oh four three is next. The sewing bundle with the gauge, the washable tape, the needle and grabbers. Which one are you going right. to do first? Okay. Needle grabbers. These are ideal for holding the needle, putting it in place in your sewing machine, or pulling the needle through. Right. So they will grab, it's rather like those things you used on jam pot covers. I know. So it's a very small one of those. Pulling the needle through, holding the needle. Because you things. think they slip on the needle, yep. don't they? Right, what's next? Then we've got wash away tape. Now this is absolutely ideal. It's an adhesive tape. I don't know if the camera can get as close as this. Now this tape will dissolve in just cold water. So okay. I'm going to put it into there and it will just dissolve. It takes about five minutes and it will dissolve. We won't, so it we won't pick great. it out and put it on the floor, just so I know what you're no. thinking. Um, thinking. It would simply goes away, so it's great for sticking in places for appliques. When you wash it, it just washes away. Brilliant. This looks good. Measuring device. You always need a measuring device, because I'm sorry, girls and boys, the, ro the rulers are not as accurate as this is, and there are times when you have got to be absolutely spot on. So this measuring gui guide has one for buttons at that end, seam turner at the top, and then this very, very useful gauge for getting that hem, that seam, that quarter of an inch set on your sewing machine accurate. I wouldn't be without mine. Gauge is a good word because it's better than ruler because it just makes you think engineer. It makes you think, yes, it's right. 428 03, it's accuracy. New, exclusive right. here at Crank Crop. Oh, wait on. Can you see it's nearly all it's it's nearly nearly gone. gone? Yep. And that's oh, just in cold great. water. If you could spray somebody and they would just go. <laughs> Anyway, if 428043, another one's little bargains you can grab today. And remember, every single item that you buy, you're in to that free price draw. Every single item that you buy could be up that, up to that third item for another 10% off. So even though the prices are amazing, new and exclusive, I thought it was one other one, uh, <laughs> but you still want to get some more. Now, okay, this, this is looks what I'm using. Incredible. This is the 10 degree wedge. All right, you need 36 of them to make a circle, nine of them to make a quarter circle, 18 of them to make a half circle. And the design possibilities with that tool are absolutely amazing. Okay. Uh, we haven't Shall got put it on there. If I put it on there, put it on there, it's fine. You can see it, can't you? There. Shall leave it there? So we've got that particular ruler, which I'll be using a lot of, the 10 degree wedge. If you haven't got it as yet, you will want it by the end of the show. Put it in your basket. Now then, mm. can I just quickly say it's double discount for club members on that one? Wow. 274 I must do my job. Uh, 274051 if you want to buy yours. Remember, all of these items, we are going very quickly, so we'll get to the school quickly. Uh, the first time every month wants to get to school quickly. Uh, and um, you can go to the website, cretoncraft.com. Now then, I must, I've got to be careful this morning, because um, I went to a seafood disco last night. I pulled a muscle. Oh, poor man. Ah, oh, you should do more yoga. You should stand on one foot and no, do I things a, like disco, that. Disco, pulled a muscle. Oh, what? Right, next up. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> good morning, good Sunday morning to you. Uh, 375585 is <laughs> no, for the patchwork template Dresden. Yep, we know about Dresden. the Dresden with a difference because this is Dresden with an arc. Oh. Because this will do arky bits or straighty bits. We will Dresden. get a scalloped edge or, if we use this. Yes, or you can have an inward scallop. So you and can any. have concaves and convex. Of course you arcs. can. You're yes. in charge, as yep. Bruce used to say. Oh, no, he didn't. I'm in charge. £5.59, double discount for club members again this morning. Moving along nicely to right. more measuring okay. devices. Right. This is an invaluable 
ruler. Why is it invaluable? A, it's a great drafting tool because it's marked out in quarter and eighths of an inches. Huh? B, it doesn't... Oh, play. laying on. Right? It is not to be used with your rotary cutter, but it's also a compass or a pair of compasses technically because you can put a pin through there and a pencil oh, through the other and draw circles. That, that, that device there has been used for centuries, yes. hasn't it? Really, a, a straight really edge with holes idea. in for a, a compass. So it's it been will used do for your centuries. scallops, it will do your circles, it does your drafting. Brilliant. It is, I think, a really useful tool. I have one all the time. I have one for so long, I've worn can the Can I just say, to get an extra 10%, you can need to add one more thing to your basket. You've bought a couple of things this morning. They're in your basket already. Thinking, I need one more thing. Even if you're not sure if you're going to ever use is it £2.39 for club members? Even if you got just to get your 10% off, that's your £2.30 back, isn't it? So you've paid for it anyway. So make that your third item okay. anyway, because you're going to use it at some point. 303 499. You're watching Crate Craft here with Jenny Raymond. It is Quilting Classroom this morning in just a few moments' time when we go through these wonderful items right. that Jenny hand picks, by the way, uh, so you can get through your uh, quilts and make them easier and quicker. Pins. Pins, right. These pins are very special because these pins are numbered. Hang on there, let me get mine because the viewers can't see that they're numbered unless the box is open. Look at them there. These are numbered. Why and do I need numbered pins are very going, quickly? Well, because they'll identify the pieces. And this morning, to be able to count and have numbered pins, you might find very useful. Oh, so if you can't so count, you So numbers, you're one to ten. Nice big pins, easy to grip, easy to see, right. and that problem is solved. I'm going to be that. I'm going to be that character in the in the pantomime. You go boo because I move us on. Uh, right now, clear grip. Okay, that is a very thin stuff that goes on the back of your ruler and see through. I would like you to test two templates. Okay. okay. Right. Tell me which one slides more than the other. Oh. Uh, and you didn't know which one had it on because I didn't tell you. Oh. Right. That's got the grip stuff. That's on. grippy. Yes. That isn't. No. Oh, that's so clever. So that takes and you can a see lot it. of. If, yes. So on the back of it, it's got the grippy stuff. I like that. It's um, called clear grip, actually. Uh, clear grip is perfect for using quilting rulers. Prevents rulers from slipping when fabrics and when cutting with the rotary cutter. We need that. Saves your fingers. Yep. 404950, because one slip, the first slip is the deepest. It is indeed. Now and then. I, even I understood that. Mm. Right, we've got black wadding as well as cream wadding. Hurrah! Why do you want black? The reason why you want black... I don't black know, I was going to ask you that, but you've asked it anyway, it doesn't matter. Is the reason why you want black is that if you're working with black fabric, you mm. don't want the chance no. of that pulling through. Because no. if you hammer away on the machine, sometimes little white bits can come through. So we haven't had black wadding on before, That's so there the first time is ever. black That's wadding. That's a sellout. That's a sellout because wadding always sells out anyway. Uh, the Hobbs Premium Cotton Wadding is uh, top of the range. Black or white, 428046 is the item number. Um, do you know how big this is, Jen? Do you know what size is this? I think it's queen size. I think it's queen size. We'll, we'll check the set measurements out for you and get them on the screen. Uh, 90 for you by 100 and something, 24 or something like that. So 90 by 108. 108. They've they just are been told. 90 by 108 inches, just so you know. It's it, big. That's big. It's big. And uh, the nice thing is you can join it together, so you never waste any of it. You just literally butt the bits stuff, up together, it? zigzag across. So you need black wadding. There Why are times would you not use you're this? going to have that and you're going to want that. Guy, if you buy both, you pay one postage. Just saying. Right, let's move on. 428046. Um, we move on to. Right. I've I, got a bit of an addiction to gloves. Well, these are better than mine because these are the new ones. I have the old ones. Now, the these reason why the new size, ones are they? better is that these oh, yeah, have got small, cool, definite plum. grippy bits. Well, they're, they're medium to large, they're not large, large. They've got grippy bits here. So they really do grip. The older ones that I have, these ones, didn't have such good grippy bits. Yes. So those really do, because what you, you need them for. Okay, you've got to see this bit. Go on uh, this is the Tucked Up Circle teaching this festival quilts on Wednesday. Festival of quilts Wednesday, where is Day it? Day class, Birmingham. But Ooh. I was just saying, they don't mind know where it is. Birmingham Festival Quilts, this lady teaching. I'm also teaching. doing it in Paducah, by the way, in oh, September. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, look at you. In Paducah. Mm. At the fall show in Paducah. But when you're holding the, the work, you need to hold the fabric, and that will grip the fabric. That's fantastic. And they it? really do grip. And they're not as all encompassing. If you've no, got these quite, ones. They're quite uh, workshoppy. Because I've got yep. gloves like yep. this and they're not quilted. Well, these were their these, original these ones. These are so much good, softer. But those are great. And great if you want to do mine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We right. all do mime when no one's at home. It's like dancing when no one's, when no one's at home. Yeah, do a bit of mime, didn't you? Now then, if you want to get hold of those, give me, give me the details, because, um, oh, you've moved, oh, the gloves. Uh, the quilting gloves, medium love, nine, inch, nine inches in length. I mean, I haven't got the biggest hands, but I've got, I've got like sausage fingers, so they, they, they're tight they, they, fit for they me. They fit me easily, and but I because have they're, large because hands. Because they're like a netting, yes. they, they adjust anyway. Um, 428051 if you want to get hold of those. 
eight pounds ninety nine. Good, um, good investment. Those ones, especially if you're moving fabric. Now then, talking of fabric all the way through, we're going to get off you some fabric, haven't we? Uh, and we're going to do that very quickly now and get this uh, all wrapped up. Me to you, you to me. A pack of six fat quarter assortments, six designs in here. Some lovely little designs. You've actually got little bears on. The yep. me to you, of oh. course, is that little te teddy that we've grown to love just recently. And now you can start quilting with him as well as card and making. And that will do ideally for what we're doing today. Will it do? It'll yes, work. it will do. Perfect. All the fabrics we've got, and the next lot of fabrics will all work for today's class. So that's the six designs for £10 first for club members. However, if you want to step it up, the more you buy, the better value it is. And we have 12 of those, same things, sort of doubled up really. 405810. So it's Oh, hang on. Wait, wait, wait. Pack of 12, there you go. Right, Perfect. okay. Now, if you have the two of them, that will do the Linda Onions quilt. The Linda so, Onions quilt. Which you will see. So 12. And six, 18 fat quarters. But for do. this moment in time, 405813, this is a pack of 12, which is six designs, two of it's what I've just shown you here, for £17.59. So again, it's, uh, it's all about value. Which way you want to go, it's up to you. Yeah. Wow, this is nice. This is really nice. Isn't this nice? When I Adorn saw it. this, I thought, just have to have this, because this will be absolutely superb for what we're doing today. You can make the most fabulous circle, bar yellow circle, just circle, what you like out of that super 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 colors love the green love the creams love the gold with the sparkly bits on it beautiful really very very soft? nice lovely top quality cotton top quality fabric, cotton fabric yeah definitely and then polka and this is a gold polka mm. dye so you can see mm. that it's actually got gold almost like an arme on there and beautiful. they're all half meters and they all mix and match and go together so you know if you're worried about colors that lot will work an absolute and also trick. not just quilting but all the books you've bought recently debbie's books and all that sort of when you're talking about fabric that's what you need half a meter half a yard right Roughly the same. Yep. This is the sort yes, of thing you need. Absolutely. Four or seven, four, one, two. Oh, hang on. We've s there's a sexy flexi basket appeared on your screen. So already all that stuff now can go into here if you want it to. Uh, the Adornit Holly Jolly Half Yard Combo Pack. Eight uh, fabrics in there for just £44.99. But remember, £22.50 if you go uh, via the flexi basket. And then another one, we've got my number four here. Which, right, actually, is that the right way around? One. Yes, oh, it was the yes, right way around. I just yes. thought we got the wrong one because this no, is Christmassy. That's, that's right. Christmas. But here we go. Look at this. This is really true. This reminds me of all the wrapping paper stuff. Oh, look at those. Those would be great for cards. Yeah. You could put those in aperture cards. And there's, there's really great snowflakes. snowflakes here. So we didn't want to not do Christmas for the quilters out there because obviously we do Christmas for uh, card makers, etc. But you need and time you need... to make things for Thank Christmas. Thank you. In fact, there's a Christmassy thing up there on Nove the wall. November's just a bit late. Yes, just a bit late <laughs> because you'll never get it done by, by that time. Good intention and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got the fabric and you've got the machine, you've got the know-how, all you need is the time. That's something you need to supply. Can't do that. 407410, again on Flexi Pay if you want to get this. Same price, $44.99, uh, $44 which is £22.50. pence. So there you go, there's preview, there's everything in the show. Um, now remember, all these items are available right now. Buy more than, uh, let's go buy three of them in your flexi basket, you'll get an extra 10% off. So if someone likes to shop smart, perfect time for you to do that. A lot of new and exclusive in the show, and you're in the prize draw as well. I think it's about time for the prize I think it is. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, uh, don't forget all of these items on our website right now, a landing page of the Sunday morning. Let's go to it now. It is the quarter classroom with Jenny Raymond everything on here uh, we have the products we've shown you and also previous quilting classrooms you can go back and look again so remember crankcraft.com isn't just about buying stuff today it's about learning stuff that we showed you yesterday but here we are here's Jenny Raymond morning all right at long last we've got the quilting classroom and for those of you who are a little confused yes it was meant to be last week but due to various things beyond my control it is now this week i know the title of the show says quilt studio it actually should say quilting classroom do not panic there is a pdf you can download the pdf it is there just simply go to the website page click on the current lesson and there is the pdf written mainly by linda onions parts of it have been added by myself but what we're working with today is we are going to be using the wedge template and it's a wedge template that has created all the things that I'm going to show you today. If you're going to use the wedge template it would be very sensible to put some of the clear grip on the back of it. Now this stuff when you come to use it is a thin fine plastic and all I would suggest you do is draw round or draw the shape you wish to add the, sh the uh, to which you add the, um, the clear grip to on the paper cut it out and then just peel the clear grip off the back it just peels away it will then stick to the back of the template and stop it from sliding so to be recommended the clear grip you can put it on the back of anything you don't want to slide 
Now, when you get your wedge, what we're going to do initially is look at just using the wedge. And you could cut out shapes from the wedge from your fat quarters, from your half meters. If you're just going to use literally simple, plain half meters, you could end up by making a panel, or rather a circle, that looked something like this. Now, don't worry about the fact she hasn't got his middle in it, but this is, so she's covering herself up, the circle you could make that could be a tablecloth, it could be something for the back of the sofa, it could be a picnic mat, it also makes into a really useful toy bag, as you will see. That particular piece, which I know we have done before some time ago, but to run quickly through it so I can move on to Linda Onion's panel, is done by taking your fabrics, laying out the fabric, give it a press first, iron it, and then all you're going to do is cut from the fabric wedge shapes. Now it depends as to where you position the wedge as to exactly how small a center you've got. If you use the top of the wedge on the outside and you're working with fat quarters, you won't be using the entire strip of fabric. This means you'll get a larger center because this will be part of the center. If you were to slide the ruler down, you'll get a smaller middle because your center will only be three inches away from the very center point. So nearer the edge of the fabric with the ruler gives you a smaller center, further away from the edge of the fabric gives you a larger center. This will depend on where you position your fabric, will depend also on how wide the fabric is. So just to make a simple design, you could take your materials and cut out 36. Now 36 is important to remember. Be aware that 36 is divisible in a lot of different ways. And this is where those times tables come in very useful. For instance, four nines are 36, so you could use four colors nine times. Nine fours are 36, nine colors four times. Two 18s, 18 twos, three 12s, 12 threes, etc., etc., six sixes. So there's a myriad of combinations of different colors that could be used to make up your 36 shapes. Or you could just go literally for random and use up the scraps. So one would cut the various pieces, sew them all together in whatever order you wanted. Once you've sewn them all together, you're going to end up with a large circle with a hole in the middle. The trouble is, if you've got a large circle with a hole in the middle, you need to stabilize the hole. So let's look at the one I showed you earlier. In the center here is a piece of calico. You could use any fabric you liked that I literally have just used to stabilize the hole. It's just a scrap. Now, it was quite a good idea that when you do stabilize such a large hole, to give yourself something, some guide as to how you pin it down to make sure you get that middle as round as possible. And that is where I found the circle scallop ruler to become very useful. As we explained earlier on the preview, the ruler itself has down it a series of little dots. The easiest way to use the ruler as a compass is get a drawing pin and stick the drawing pin either to your cutting mat or to a piece of card. Put the ruler so the zero number goes on the drawing pin, pop it through there, and then with a pencil you can decide on the radius of your ruler, put the ruler in the right hole so you're getting it one way around and just draw all the way around and that will give you a circle. If you wanted to draw it on fabric you would simply put the fabric in between the ruler and the pin, put the ruler on the top and draw around on your fabric. So you could use this for drawing a wide variety of different circles. And that's exactly what I did with the center of this particular panel, which enabled me to pin the work fairly regularly around the edge. But that left me with a problem. I've got a rather large hole in the middle that's now filled with calico. One way of filling the hole in could be to literally draw another circle using the circle scallop one, cover it up, put a circle on top and this is where that wash away tape would be ideal because you could stick it in place to hold it in place before you applied it either by machine or by hand or of course you could stick it down and simply bind over the raw edge. Be aware that if you're going to bind anything that's circular you must use fabric that's been cut on the bias. It's got to be bias cut fabric otherwise it won't bind around nice and flat. So you could cover the center up with a circle. You could say, hey, I don't want to do that. Why don't I use the Dresden plate? 
And if you take the threads and plate, and we'll come to using how you cut it out later, but cut out 20 sections, because the Dresden plate works in 20 sections, you could place a Dresden plate circle on top of the old circle underneath, then bind it, and of course cover up the centre with a little circle in the middle, which has gone on the floor. Let's get it. So there we go. So you could cover all that up. And indeed, the finished tablecloth is actually on the table over there in the corner there. So if the camera guys won't mind going over to there, you can see what the finished tablecloth looks like. There we have all the pieces cut out, Dresden plate applied in the middle, circle applied to fill in the hole of the Dresden plate. So that's the wedge in its absolute simplest form. What else could you do with it? Well, you could say, OK, that's fine, all right, like that, but I don't want to make a circle. Well, you don't need to worry. You could take just nine wedge-shaped sections. You don't have to use the entire wedge. You could use a much smaller section of it. Sew them together and you've got the fan. Grandmother's fan, it's called. This could then be applied to a background square and you've got a cushion. But you might say to yourself, oh yes, but it's got a hole in the middle. Well, the hole in the middle could be filled with a quarter circle. And the easiest way to cut a quarter circle would be to cut a whole circle and simply cut it into four. Then you could perhaps make four fan cushions and you've got really a nice set for the sitting room, dining room, wherever you want to put them. So you could just take these pieces and have nine of them. But then you might say, oh, I want a decorative edge. Well, there's no reason why you can't do the Dresden plate trick we've often done on the show before. And that is take the individual pieces before you sew them together, fold them in half and just sew across the top here. And that will give you pointy edges to your fan, which makes it much more attractive. So this is literally done by taking the shape, folding the shape in half before you sew them together and sewing straight across the end. When you've sewn straight across the end, I would advise you to just clip the point off the seam turn it through and that's where the pointy end of that little poker will be jolly good for poking it out then you're going to end up with a nice pointy edge to your fan and you can add the quarter circle in the middle so already the wedge shape got all sorts of possibilities but we've only been working with one color what would happen if i stitched more than one color together what would happen if i sewed strips together so on this panel we have a series of strips you could use a jelly roll, and indeed there are jelly rolls actually on the show. So you could sew together 10 strips. If you wished, you could sew together less, you could sew together more. If you then use the ruler to cut out pieces, and the same thing would apply depending on where you positioned your ruler, would change the size of hole you had in the center. If you then cut out your pieces from there, these can be laid out and arranged to form pattern. Because when you come to cut them out, I didn't explain this stage, you will cut up one up one way and one up the other way. So one will come from there and one will come from there. So you'll get the reverse, the mirror image. And if your strip arrangement is slightly different, when you come to put these together, something rather nice happens. So we've got one piece there and one piece there. And notice that some of the colours swap round. And if you did this all the way round, you could end up with a panel that looked like this one. Here we have exactly that single strip of fabric all the way around. And to fill in the center, what I've done here is the good old trumpets from Tucks, Textures and Pleats. We've had that on the show many times. Trumpets in the middle there, just to give it something a little bit different. So that's taking just strips and the 10 degree wedge. But you could, of course, apply the same argument. Why not take nine sections, sew nine sections together, and again, give them pointy edges? So the possibilities for play with this particular tool are enormous. Now, Linda Onions, she's the lady who made the quilt that's behind me, this one. She used the nine, 10 degree wedge to make this particular quilt. And Linda worked in four colors. She worked in four colors that she repeated. So there are technically four colors there, the same four colors there. And on the PDF that you will find, Linda explains very clearly exactly how she did it. Now, she did it in a subtly different way to the way I'm going to show you how I did it. Linda took her four colours and laid her four colours out in whatever order she happened to want them to appear. It is up to you to decide on your order, but I would tend to keep my lights together and probably my darks together. She then constructed a strip of the four colours in a particular order. 
from that strip, she cut out nine wedges. And the reason why she cut out nine wedges is because four nines make 36. Four colors, nine wedges. She then made a strip of the same colors, but in a subtly different order, and cut out nine wedges of those. This was repeated one more time with another set of colors, and you have to be very careful you get your colors in the right way, nine pieces, and one last final band, nine pieces. The nine sections were then sewn together very much in the way that I'm going to show you, and as is clearly explained on the PDF. If you can't get the PDF, you always get a friend to download it for you. Probably go to the library as well and be able to print it off from there. So Linda did four strips, four different arrangements of the various different colours, and cut out the nine pieces, which gave you the really rather nice quilt that's here. Again, the centre could be filled in with whatever fabric you liked that complemented it. She's quilted it in arcs coming out from the centre, which give it this really rather lovely spiral effect, and she calls it the spiral bargello. Looking at it, I thought, OK, that's fine, but what would happen if you used more colours? So I decided to have a play with using more colours, and I went for six fabrics. And you, I cut out two and a half inch wide strips. Now, this is just a very small sample. You arrange the strips in whatever colour order you feel you'd like them to appear, appear in. Bear in mind that in the colour order, the outside two will actually come together. You will see why. Because we're going to be now using what's known as the cylinder method. When you come to sew your strips together, and you'll of course be sewing either lengths of fat quarters or the full half yard or half metre lengths, you need to remember to go up one way and back the other, and up and back. Don't sew them all in the same direction, because if you do that, you'll end up with a diamond. But if you sew two in one direction, and then two in the same direction, and then join the pair together with your stitching going the other way, you will at least keep the band a bit straighter. And when you come to iron it, don't iron it like that. Press it. Now, I'm a fan of pressing my seams open and flat. Linda likes to press hers to one side. It is a moot point what you choose to do. Once you've sewn the strips together, you're going to end up with a band. And here is my band of my fabrics in the colour choice that I chose to put them together. From this band, you're going to cut wedge shapes. And this is where you'll find the numbered pins very, very useful, as well as probably some masking tape. Now, because I'm using six colours and we've got 36 pieces, can you possibly think of how many strips I'm going to want? How many times does six go into 36? Six times! Well done! Those times tables paid off. You knew they'd come in useful sometime. There is going to be a colour arrangement like this. So you could cut out six pieces from this particular arrangement of colours. But I'm going to go for the cutting out a section. Putting the ruler onto, the wedge ruler onto the piece of fabric, I want to have the smallest sized centre possible. So I'm going to have this end on the raw edge of the fabric. Look at where it comes to on the ruler, and you need to measure the width of the ruler at the junction where it touches the edge of the fabric, because that's how you're going to cut your pieces up. This will become clear. And the answer to that was three and a quarter. So from this particular panel, I am now going to cut three and a quarter inch strips. What I have often done is made myself a little mental note and stuck perhaps a piece of tape on just to remind myself of the size I'm working with. So from this band, you are going to cut three and a quarter inch strips. Believe me, this is actually the best way to do it because I went initially for cutting out the pieces and then discovered to my horror, if it's a bit more than three and a quarter, it doesn't matter, discovered to my horror that I'd cut the wedge out the wrong way round. This will become clear shortly. Having cut your pieces out, you'll then take the wedge ruler and from this piece, you're going to cut a wedge, but don't cut it yet lay that piece to one side and number it number one. You could use a bit of masking tape, or better still, you could use one of those really nice pins. If you think you're apt like I am to move the pins, I would do pins and masking tape as a sort of double whammy. Number one. Make up some more series of these strips. 
you are then going to turn the next series of strips into what I can only describe of as a cylinder. This is where the cylinder method name come from. So the strips are stitched together to make a band. I press my seams open and flat. When you've got the band, from the band you will need to cut five more three and a quarter inch wide strips. So get your rotary cutting ruler out, cut three and a quarter inches. If you're a little bit concerned, cut three and a half. It really doesn't matter. Once you've cut five more, you will have enough sections to make up one sixth of the design. Remember, six sixes are 36. What is going to happen then is you're going to unpick this systematically. So if we take the number one one and look at it, you're then going to unpick between the top two colours, which is going to be, I want to put my strip around the wrong way, silly Billy. I'm sorry, I had it upside down. Let's go this way. Just ignore that bit. Right, pink's at the top. I'm going to unpick between the pink flowers and the pink dots. Undo. Lay it down. And can you see what's happened is the white's climbed up, the greens have climbed up, and one of the pinks fallen to the bottom. I'm now going to undo from my next strip, going to undo between the pink dots and the white. Open it out. Pink goes to the top. Pink dots go to the bottom. White to the top, pink dots to the bottom. Number four will be unpicked between the white and the green. Unpick it. See how useful these pins are. They've numbered it for me. Number five. Let's move these things out of the way. We can see that dog see the rabbit. Number five will then be that one at the top. And number six has promptly vanished. There it is. And number six is over here. So can you see I've now unpicked my six strips Check the colours are doing the correct things, all going in the right order. At this stage now, you now need to cut them out into being your wedge shapes. So getting the wedge ruler, which I moved to over here, place the wedge shape on top and cut each one out to being a true wedge. I actually found it was better to turn the piece over, put the wedge on the top, then you can line up the lines on the ruler with actually the seam lines. So cut them out. Once you cut them out as your six shapes, clear all this out of the way and have a lovely time at home sorting it all out afterwards, you're going to end up with six beautiful wedge shaped pieces. Number one, number two, and keep checking the colors. Number three, number four, and five, and six. And all you're going to do then is sew the whole lot together, which will make a really rather nice sixth of the entire piece. Now, the design I'm now going to show you is formed by repeating that six times. Now, the reason why I'm using the cylinder method is I found this was easier for a multiple of colours because you only had to stitch the strips together in one order. You didn't have to think about constantly changing the order. If you unpick inadvertently in the wrong place, you can always restitch and re-unpick. And by laying it out before you cut it into the wedges, you won't have the problem that I had by cutting the wedge the wrong way round. Believe you me, it doesn't work, which is why there's a giveaway, because I've got quite a lot of pieces left over. If you were to take six of those shapes and then stitch them all together, you're going to end up with this particular piece, which I think is so pretty. And can you see how you've got this lovely swirl of the colours going round? Six of these swirls all going round. And then, of course, you'll be back to the circle and scallop ruler because then you could create the centre to go in the middle. Now, this was done using strips exactly the same size. And I thought, OK, that's fine. But what would happen if? Because that's what I like about patchwork is what would happen if? What would happen if I use strips of different sizes? Well, I did. I sewed together thin ones and thick ones, and it didn't work. In fact, it looked pretty terrible. When I put it together, look what happened to the design. And it's just basically a mess. This piece really shouldn't be here. I had a slightly wrong color arrangement. But you could, if you wanted to, use different sizes of strips to stitch them together. But I suggest you do a dummy before you use all the fabric that you've got and you haven't got enough to unpick it and start again. So that was looking at it using the wedge ruler. Then thought, hey, could you do the same thing with the Dresden plate? And the answer to that was yes. 
if you have the Dresden plate that we have on the show, this is the nice Dresden plate with the arced edge. Let me get my pieces out of here. Instead, we have a lovely giveaway because somebody can have all of those pieces. Now, where have I hidden the Dresden plate? Which has gone totally walk about there it is. If you use the Dresden plate, it is a multi-sized Dresden plate. So this Dresden plate will make really small Dresdens like that. And you can have the pointy edge. Because this Dresden plate has an arc, you could use the Dresden plate, let's look at this one next, to make an arced edge. And again, you can make it any size because you can move the arc down and just have a smaller arc. You could indeed use the arc the other way around and have a scalloped convex edge, sorry, concave edge round there. So this Dresden plate works remarkably well. You could indeed, and I was thinking, hey, I'm doing those tucked up circles. Why don't I take pieces of the Dresden plate, cut them out and sew them together with a piece of fabric tucked in the seam? And this is nothing more complex than 20 wedges of Dresden plate, 10 in one color, 10 in another. Sew them together and in every seam you put a one and a half inch wide strip of fabric. And if you cut it on the bias, when you come to flex the strip, because that will flex in the seam, you'll get a slightly more round effect. So this happened yesterday. I was feeling sort of, oh, I didn't know what to do with myself. So then I thought, hey, you could take almost a tucked up circle, stitch it together with the bits in between. So I think I'm going to add this to my tucked up circle class. But that's not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is how you can make that same swirly thing using the Dresden plate. So if you now sew together four strips, that's all you need, because the Dresden plate isn't terribly big. Although, to be honest, you could always extend it. By simply putting the Dresden plate onto something like a piece of card, or something you could see through, and if you carefully draw lines up the side of it, you can extend it and make it longer. And indeed, if you made it longer, you could make the design we've got on the wall there, the black one with the various pointed bits, where I've stretched the Dresden plate, cut out sections in black fabric, and stretched sections of the stripy fabric in between. So you could extend it, it doesn't have to be exactly that size. But if we took four strips, two and a half inches, cut them together, and this time you want to cut from your particular band, not three and a quarter. The width of these pieces are three and three quarters. You will see why. So exactly the same technique, but you're going to cut three and three quarter inches. When you cut the three and three quarter inches, you'll need four of them because we're going to be doing five sections of four pieces. Having got all four of them, you're then going to Start making your cylinder, so sew the pieces together to make the cylinder. So you want to cut off four sections like that, sew the remaining strips into a cylinder. From the cylinder, cut off all the little armbands, and then you're going to unpick. So let me cut off a little armband. Notice the little thread savers wobbling away at the end there. So we're working on three and three quarter inches. When it comes to unpicking, take the top section. So our, the next piece will be unpicked between the pink flower and the green dots. One little hint, when you are sewing these strips together, it does pay to actually stitch them together with a slightly smaller than usual stitch length. Because as you're putting the bits together and cutting them, there is just the chance that the stitching might part. Now a little hint, re-unpicking, rather than using your unpicker, a small pair of very sharp scissors, and if you undo about every fourth stitch, one side will have a nice long bit of thread you can pull away and the other side will have the pieces. Next bit that goes down will be, I got that, oh I got that horribly wrong. I think I've made a mistake there. How did I manage to do that? That was a bit silly. Doesn't fit at all, does it? There we go. I knew, I knew it went one way. You'll need to cut your pieces off and we want four sections. Four sections cut them back again to being the correct wedge shapes and number them. The numbered pins work an absolute treat. So you'll have number one, number two, number three, let's move that out of the way, get rid of it in the time-honored fashion, and number four. Sew them together to make the wedge. And that's going to end up looking something like that. Remembering, numbering every single section. Pins work an absolute treat. Can't stress how much the numbering and indeed the pins will help. 
Once you've done all the sections, you're going to end up with a circle like this, which gives you the same sort of thing, but considerably smaller. I would suggest that you stabilize the middle and then you can make a center to go on the top. Well, it's all very well. You might say to yourself, okay, yeah, what do I do with this? Well, you could play with the design. You could go on and play. If we look at the black and purpley one over there, that's really playing with the design. That was actually done with two different cylinders unpicked in a variety of places. And the trick that I would suggest you're going to do with that, because I had thinner strips, I had to hold it very steady on the cutting mat. So what I actually did was on the cutting mat, I put a piece of double-sided sticky tape so I could lay that on the cutting mat, stretch my fabrics over it, and stick my fabrics exactly flat to the cutting mat and in the right place before I cut the wedges out. Or you could say to yourself, hey, I could make something like a toy bag. And there was a toy bag. I got seriously fed up with the grandchildren scattering their stuff all over the carpet and all those little pieces to pick up. Let's move all this out the way. And I had a spare circle. I thought, hey, I could make a toy bag. And all I've got to do is they can play on the mat. When they've played on the mat, I can then gather up all the toys and they're all good to go. And all it was, was one of the circles that I'd already made and some Velcro. And you literally wrap it up like that, fasten the Velcro in a couple of places, grab the handles and it's ready to go. So how do we make the bag? Well, the bag is made quite simply. I'm going to show you it a miniature version. Here we have a mini version. You will need two circles. So you could either have the enormous circle that I have or just as a miniature one because there really isn't room on the counter to have such an enormous thing. You will need one circle for the top of the bag and one circle for the back of the bag. This is where wadding will be useful. And remember, if you're working on wadding, that black wadding is going to be absolutely ace if you're working on black fabric because otherwise, as you're sewing, little bits of wadding can come through. So take the side that you're going to quilt lay it onto some fluff, some wadding, some batting. You'll need to make it handles, and the handles can be any length you like. These are obviously a mini version. The ones that I've got here had considerably longer handles. I wanted them long enough to be able to sling it over my shoulder, stick it on the door handle so they're out of the way. Make a couple of handles. It's quite a good idea to check that the handles are about the same length. Having got the handles, you're going to fold your bag in half, find the middle of it, and then bring it so that one side comes literally to about a third and one side covers it up by about a third. So you're folding your circles into thirds. At the junctions of the thirds, mark it with a couple of pins because that's where your handles are going to go. So one pin there and one pin there. So we folded our circle, found the center, folded one piece over the center to about a third and the other side, so into thirds. Where the pins are, you'll then need to put the handles. And the handles want to go with right side of handles to the front of the quilt, so seam will be uppermost. Put your handles on, making sure they're going down into the bag. The number of times that people have put handles on the other way round, and then you turn it through to discover, oh look, I've got little bits of handles sticking up. So one handle there, one handle there. I would be inclined to stitch the handles on several times backwards and forwards in the seam allowance. So this is a circle which could be any size you like. You could make it this size, you could make it bigger. One handle one side, one handle the other side. Double check that your handles are in much the same place. Once you stitch them on backwards and forwards, take the lining, put the lining on top making a giant sandwich. So all the way around the giant sandwich, but leave a gap. If you don't leave a gap, you won't be able to turn it through. Turn the whole thing through the gap, once you've turned it through the gap, I suggest you then just fold the edges in there and sew it up beautifully by hand or, quick cheating tip here, I would go over that with a small zigzag done on the machine. So you could just close it with a little zigzag. Use either a thread that matched one or, two or the other of the colours. Once you've done that, it is just then a question of refolding it back into its thirds and putting something like the hook and loop fastener. 
you want one piece in the middle and one piece probably there and one piece there and that will make your little bag for you because all you'll do then is fold it up gathering all the stuff up so let me just show you mine again so this was a really good use for one of my tucked up circles here's the velcro in the middle velcro there velcro there open it out children can play do what they like with all the various things get fed up with it right put the children to bed wrap it up again there you are stick your velcro together hang it on the door handle and it the floor is clean and you're good to go so there you are rd that is genius i have a five-year-old <laughs> if you're anyone has lego Okay, at home, if you're a parent, if you have connects or anything <laughs> small parts, if you've ever trodden on one of those, oh, it's so that's painful. a brilliant. Oh, it's no more than painful. <laughs> and the square doesn't work. A square doesn't work. Because they, they, they like to play round things. But also, it's, it, but it's what gives parameters for children. Yes. Like keep it on the mat. Yes. That is yes. genius. And if you put it around, there's no top or bottom to it. No. So it can be anywhere on the mat and they're always equal. I need you to make me one of those immediately. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, what a great hour. It's gone so quickly. I, I'm have to throw the rest of my tea down the sink. Uh, 428046. Now, the Hobbs Premium Cotton Wadding is something you may be using on a lot of these projects that Jenny's been talking to you about in the last hour. Has it gone quick? Have you enjoyed it? I'm sure you have, because I have. Uh, and we've been watching on the telly and they've been nice. We've been drinking their tea watching you. Uh, and uh, if you want to get yours, it's got black or white available. But I have to come in and say um, it's very, very busy. We might run out of this again. It's one of our biggest selling items in these shows. And to Today, 2249 will give you a, a 90 by 108 size. Now, just for again, why? I know it's a simple question, but I'm going to ask it again. Why white and black? We've traditionally had white on the show for, or cream forever. Because no one thought to have black. Right. They've had black for ages. And when I was looking through the catalogue, I thought, why haven't we got black? The number of times doing something black, I need the black stuff. Because if you're sewing, you might be pulling some of the threads mm. through from mm. that uh, project that mm. could be a black or a dark colour, yeah. and it makes sense to have a darker colour. I'd buy both if I were you, if you can afford to do so. Yeah, uh, shop smart. So, because not everyone knows, because we're working in inches, and people out there do centimetres, that's how long it is. Well, 72 is six foot, so 80... 84 times seven table, seven, seven foot. foot. My blind. And my it's double that. So if we hold it up, that, yes. <laughs> hold it up. No, we haven't got. And it's double that it's again. It's double that. Look, yes. I just showed this. You can't. It's, there's two pieces yes. of fabric here. There's, so it's, you, it's that, is that again? We're it's not, that we're not again up that enough. way. It's huge. Okay, and you will use every single scrap. So two, two, clothing, eight by two, seven, four centimeters Thank approximately. You. And Thank we've you. now got to fold that back up again. I think there's a fold there. I'm a bit funny like that. Well, it's all right. Oh, it doesn't matter. We'll, 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 we'll let Magic Hand sort it all out. All you need to know is you buy more, uh, three items or more in your basket, you can get another 10% off that if you want to, because if you bought both of those items, that's two. Yes. Okay. And maybe just buy the gloves or something, or buy, the, or buy, or, we'll or buy, buy this for two pounds, yes. and you get 10% off. Um, one thing I do want to mention as well, because a lot of uh, people uh, in uh, Crankcraft USA are up early this morning. Good morning. Hello. Are morning. you going to bed soon? See you soon? all in Paducah. Yeah, I mean, some, maybe going to bed. Uh, but if you're just yeah, about to go to bed, be. get yourself an owl quickly yes. because everyone's buying them. And I've got to tell you now about the owl is you don't get one, you get all three. Look at them. Bless their little hearts. The owl pin cushion with a, a solid bottom. Listen. <laughs> 428049. Just what you want is an owl with a solid bottom. It do, but they don't fall over. No, they do. It's like when they make um, doorstops and they, they, and they do, don't they put do. enough sand or rice yes. in them and they fall over. It actually comes back again. Look at him. Aww. Ah, uh, 1169, and you get all three. And that's Jenny said earlier one for yourself, Aww. one for. And get, let, it, let it out. Let it out. Absolutely. Who is that then? Cool. Don't say. Don't no, say. Uh, you can keep one for yourself as well, and maybe one there's a little uh, secret Santa because you're paying sort of about under four pounds each for those, and they're fabulous little things. Uh, four to eight oh four nine. Now, if you want to make something similar yourself, um, how about? Hang on, grab the fabric. She's had it up that end. Come on, in. That's, oh, good, good chuck. I like the the yes. legs. So oh, it was so athletic. She's a netball. You see? She's a netball. You yes, can tell it was all legs. Really we had a, nice. What are you, are you a, a GS? GS in, in netball? Oh, she's a footballer. That's even better. Uh, thanks, Ali. Uh, but it was just the... Uh, like, anyway, don't throw anything in the studio unless it's fabric. Quite. Because you won't get any damage. No. Uh, me, uh, me to you is the back of 12 fat quarters with our fabulous little teddy friend on the front that we've heard of and seen maybe in other shows. Now your chance uh, to use him, her, uh, in any type of fabric project. Six design, two of each. This is the big wad. This is the big one. Uh, 12, 405, 813. And this is double discount. The reason I'm showing you again at the end of the show, because you could be doing anything that Jenny's been showing you, with but you need the fabric yes. with one of these. Yes. Um, and 17.59 is a fab, fab price for Plus that. Plus 
and if they've got three items. I know, I know, I know. And they've gone into the free prize draw to be three hundred pounds slash dollars. Right. Depending where you are, and uh, we've actually got the little one as well. You've got the little one in your I've hands, got haven't one. you? Yes. Yes. Uh, so this six. Is six. Now, what can you make with six? You can do with six quite a lot. You can certainly do that Dresden plate one, the one I showed you. Fab. You can do it with four colours. Can I make a toy bag? Uh, you can make a smallish toy bag. Yes. Could you? You get a toy bag probably that size. Oh, probably fab. about twenty-four inches. A out travel of one. Yes. Yeah, because I remember yep. we went away because yesterday. It would be so useful. I mean, even Scrabble. I made a smaller one for the Scrabble because I hate putting all the bits back. Now I can just grab it all up and chip it in. A little bitty one? Yes. Oh, you see, there's no limits, are there, when you've got the fabric? And, of course, fabric is one of the things we are quite addicted to. Don't forget to check out your baskets at the end of this show because these items are uh, while stocks last. We don't have everlasting stocks for these items, especially at these prices. Let me talk about the other fabrics. We've got the sort of uh, the Christmassy feels, the Adorn It, which is stunning. Now, it's got sort of like a, a Christmassy feel, but I think this is just day-to-day. -day. This is I, so lovely. I like that it's very, beautiful. very much. I like the writing, like the, the reds and the greens are fantastic. And again, you've got more writing on there, that lovely one with the metallic spot on it. Lovely. Um, were you doing a giveaway? Because we didn't speak We do indeed, it. yes. What, what have you got today? I've got some, a whole load of pieces. Oh, yes. The most we need to do that next. Now, uh, this is a flexi pie item. The reason I've ended the show on it, because you've got sexy flexi basket open straight away. <laughs> Thank you. That means uh, you can divide everything into two payments. Anything's in that basket. If it's more than three items, you get 10% off. And then you take 10% off, then you do your club discount, and then you divide it into two, and I'll pay the rest next month. And you can pay, you can play before you, you pay. Absolutely. So you'll be playing with the wedge, the Dresden plate. You could have the clear grip. You could have your fabric. You could have the whole blooming lot. You never know. You could have some bits there. to play with soon as well. Right. Let me, let me get what they're going to get. Oh, that ooh, was ooh, classy. Ooh, 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 and they ooh, cut ooh, ooh. to the website. Oh, where's she gone? I've gone to get the pieces they're going to get. Oh, OK, then. Don't run in the studio, Jim. I wasn't. That was Good. just walking fast. It sounded like you were running. Right, wow. And I've got some more bits. So this was a trial section, and it will make ooh. a quarter of a um, fan shape. So somebody can have that it's along like getting some a other pieces. A what do we used to call it? About? A bunk up? Yes. You know, you know, you get on a horse. I don't yeah. think bunk up's quite the right idea. It's not. Oh, that's what we used to call it. Still. The innocence of youth, eh? Right, it's going to. Uh, Eileen Mann in uh, Nailsea. I hope I've got that right. So, and so you won yourself. So, what do you call it? Can you give me a lift up? A shut What's that name? Um, I think it's more of a leg up. I th a leg up. Very, very conservative. <laughs> now then, ladies, we're talking of leg ups, so uh, we're going to send you on into a whole new collection next. Jenny, thank you, my darling. Just kiss. Mm -hmm. She'll be back very, very 